Hello, it's the Midlands Outdoors, back with another video today. Here we are, just where the old Whitley Colliery used to be situated. We're on a walk today that goes all the way to the River Starrow in Crowley, covering bits and pieces to do with industry. I call this the Industrial Walk, so it's one of my favourites. When I've got nothing to do, I'll always walk all the way down there, up to Bath Meadow, then all the way down Banners Lane to the River Starrow itself. Well, here we are starting at an interesting point. Let's go and show you around. This is actually where a former coal mine used to be situated called Whitley Colliery. So this is actually where Whitley Colliery used to be situated right away in front. All the new modern housing estates stretching all the way there. There actually used to be a coal mound just further at the back. And the main coal mine was actually right away in front and I will show you where about I think it was. There used to be a tramway that used to come all the way through under the Starbid Road and then over to the other side where there is still evidence of the old bridge today. I will go and show you a few things when I head down to there. But you just really wouldn't believe it, look at the aerial footage now of what this area really was comparing to now. There is a very old cottage just onto the Starbid Road which I'm going to show you. But let's go and show you where I think the car mine actually was. So right, heading all the way down this road is Millfield View. I think the coal mine used to be situated right behind there. I think it was there. I did look at the old coal authority website of where these shafts was actually situated. It did say two shafts was right away at the back. But it was all this land you can just see at the moment stretching all the way down. It's just unbelievable to see. I mean, many people might not realise that this was a coal mine. But at least some of the photos of Whitley Colliery. Really amazing to see that. You can imagine what it was really like back then, the workers. I mean, coal mining must have been a really hard job. But to see where it is here, it's really cool. And the overview of Bath Meadow, right away to the distance. And I will show you a photo when I get down to Bath Meadow of what this angle really used to look like. So it does mention here a bit of information. He says the mine owners from 1875 to 1896 was Whitley Colliery Company. 1900, it was actually the same, Whitley Colliery Co Limited. And then in 1905, it moved to Timmis and Co. So basically the coal mine opened in 1875 and it closed in 1920. So you can just really see how far the coal mine really does date back really impressive dates there and just right away in front was even more industry so i believe this is actually where the tramway was situated back in the old days it used to come right away under the road i think it was where we're standing right away now all these houses wasn't there back from then but it was right away there that come all the way under i will show you the map one more time from above i will pinpoint where the tramway used to come right away under and then just by the side of me just onto there is the old cottages that have been there back from the past for when Whitley Colliery was really here. You wouldn't believe that those houses are really still there. But if I zoom in to show you, it's actually where the chimney's sticking up right away now and just onto that corner. So just onto the other side used to be Drew's Forge. You had Drew's Forge over there. You had some other things right away to the back. And you wouldn't believe at the bottom was Holloway Pool. Here's a photo of what that really looked like. So Holloway Pool was right away to the bottom. And then you've got the Starbridge Road, which has changed really much. I did see some really cool photos of the Starbridge Road. But I mean, the houses here are more modern. So back from then, all this wouldn't have even been here. It would have been all those round things you can see on the map. And then the coal mine itself, which is right away to the back. So these have been here for a long, long time. I believe this bit here used to stretch all the way to this angle, but they've demolished part of it. But these are the original parts for the coal miners' houses. If I carefully look on this angle, you can just see the chimney go right away to the top. Look how old that is. I mean, comparing to the old aerial photo now, you just really wouldn't believe this is even still here. Got some old things to the side up to there. That's pretty cool. And then right around the corner is the old houses. Still the same, you still got the two there. So on that old aerial photo, that one was there and including that one was there as well. But I must say, I really find that cool. So did the managers of the mine used to live in there or was it for the coal mine workers of Whitley Colliery? 
but I can really picture what it did look like. The tramway going right away under from where that little bungalow was, just right around to the corner. So right here we are, Belle Vale, just right away to the back. And where we're heading in a little while is right away up to Bath Meadow. But what I want to show you is going back to Whitley Colliery. I want to show you the old tramway bridge that used to go all the way over. And this tramway used to join close to the side of Banners Lane going all the way up. And that's actually why we're walking that road. And I'll tell you more in a little while. So right here we are, this is where the tramway used to come right away over. We'll give you an ordnance survey map to show you where the tramway even led to. You can imagine how far that tramway dated back. It's pretty nice to see that stream going all the way down. You can imagine the River Star is flooded at the moment, but that is pretty much higher than usual. And here we are, this is the mineral railway that went all the way over, shown on the ordnance survey maps. So that looped all the way around, then under the Starbridge Road, went over to Whitney Colliery. I mean, you wouldn't believe that that is even still here. So that right away above used to join this side here, going right away over. I think I've got some more photos to show you of what this really did look like. So it has changed as they built all the stuff up to Bath Meadow back from years ago. But it's really nice to see something that's there being preserved well from those dates. I find it absolutely amazing. This is what it's called to start this route on the industrial walk for the coal mining. So right, we made it, here we go, Bath Meadow. So back in the old days, all this, what you can see right away in front was all fields, you wouldn't believe it. So all those right away in front never used to exist. There used to be horses on the field here and the view right away behind was spectacular because you could see the coal mounds of Whitley Colliery. You could see them right to the back. I believe you possibly might have seen Holloway Pool back in the old days, that was right away over there. But the photo of what was taken, I think if we go a little bit further on, it was taken sort of from this angle overlooking towards Whitley Colliery, which is over there, which you can't see because of all the trees blocking the view. But how amazing is that? I found a photo of what it really used to look like. But you wouldn't believe that there's actually a massive pool to serve the other side called Holloway Pool. More photos to show you one more time. But I just find it amazing. You can see things that was there that we've lost forever because of all the houses what have been developed. So right, let's go and join back up Banners Lane. I want to tell you more about the railway that was on the corner for the mines. Let's go and journey all the way up and get you some nice cinematics. So right here we are, Banners Lane, the view right away behind is spectacular, right away into the distance, especially the sunshine this morning. Wow, what a day. But this is actually closer to where the Mineral Railway actually went. 
on the old Ordnance Survey maps, the railway joined a little bit further at the back, but went all the way straight on. So uh, on the old Ordnance Survey maps, it actually says it joins by the side of Banners Lane, goes all the way down to Corngreaves Works, and that's actually where we're heading to, closer to the River Stour. And I think I've got some old photos of the old mineral train line that went all the way over. But there was quite a lot of factories down towards the River Stour. You had Stour Colliery, you had the Corn Greaves Works, you even had the Brick and Tile Works right away to the bottom. So you can pretty much see it is an industrial walk and this is why I love coming all the way down here to do this one. And then further on, heads into the back end of Crowley itself and there is much more and just further back i did cover a video of it homer hill colliery you even had more things down to the back homer hill works and there was even a tramway that went right to the back over there so that is actually a little bit closer to the river stower so it's not actually too far and then you've got crowdy forge and that's actually where we're going to be heading to right away to the bottom so you can just see if i carefully zoom in we've got turner's hill right away to the back up to Rowley Regis. You can even see parts of the back of Brawley Hill, Merry Hill in the distance behind there. And there's even further more views if we get round Banners Lane. But wow, the views from this angle, look at that, just into the distance. You can even see parts of Coombs Wood from this angle here. Just imagine living here though, where you could just open the window and you've got the beautiful views right away over there. But just imagine once more back in the old days what it was like if there was any houses here back in those days seeing the mineral railway from Whitley Colliery going all the way over down to the bottom towards the Corn Greaves Works. Must have been amazing back then you can just really see I mean from the photos what I showed you earlier it was really old living. But let's go and make our way down to the River Stour and let's go and seek some more industry right away down to the bottom. So if we just walk all the way down these steps, the stammer's right away down there. It's not as bad really, I thought it would be worse uh, by flooding a little bit more high than what it was with the amount of rain what we've had. But you may have seen the last few videos, the river stammer was really terrible. It was actually beginning to flood right away to the top, but it's gone right away down, which is really good. So we're back on the industrial walk because years ago, just right away from the banks over there, used to be more industry. So right, the first industry that was right away off the other side of the River Stara was a brick and tile works. I have found a picture on the internet of a very old brick, what potentially could be made by that company on the other side, if it is correct. It might not be the one, but I did find something. D Parsons and Sons Limited, Crady Heath, Stara uh, Brickworks. It says right away there. But the term brickworks refers to the old Ordnance Survey map brick and tile works which is right around the corner it doesn't say a specific name on there just brick and tile works well i mean that used to be situated right the way there just in front but i mean once more passing by you wouldn't realize there was industry down near the banks of the river stour like you had the corn grease works right at the back the brick and tile works even more as you're heading all the way down to cradley just find it really interesting and the river stour once more is one of my favorite walks you may have seen my last explore in the black country of the river stour all the way to the corn grease from stamba mill but here's a view of the river stour right away to the bottom but there we go a nice view of the river stour stretching all the way across it's not as bad as what i thought it was it is still a little bit deep it's got that color to it but it's actually going down 
We haven't got rain for the next few days now, it's got to be really sunny, so that is actually a bonus. So right, we've got the works right away at the back, the corn greaves iron and steel works I believe it is, I think it is actually that one over there. And here's actually an old photo showing you what the place really did look like back for those days. I'm guessing in the photo what you can just see is actually the coal tubs that come all the way from Whitley Colliery on the very old tramway leading up to the Corn Greaves Iron Works. You can just see on the old Ordnance Survey maps the tramway going all the way from Whitley Colliery leading to that section so maybe it's split off to another section to go elsewhere. It's really cool to see that and the photo itself, wow, you wouldn't believe that that we're sitting right away over there where the modern industry is today. So right, just a bit of interesting information behind the Stower Colliery. It actually opened in 1895. It closed in 1918. So there is a bit more information here. So if you want to research about it, then definitely go ahead. It was owned in 1895 to 1900 by David Parsons and Sons. And in 1905 to 1918, when it closed, was the same again. They just changed themselves to a limited company. David Parsons and Sons Limited. But I find it cool to see more information about all these mines for when they opened and for when they closed. But I can imagine there's even more information behind that car mine itself. So right back to the old Ordnance Survey maps, if I quickly show you, there was a gas works to where we're heading to right away in front. And when I get round the corner on the road, I will show you what other industries actually was there, because there is still quite a lot of factories still there at the moment. But there we go, I want to show you across the River Stower now, going all the way to the bottom, and then we'll join back up to the main roads to get over to the Cranley Ford section. So right here we are, we've nearly come to the end where it joins the road where we've got to walk all the way further on to re-meet the River Stour. But all of the industry what I want to talk to you about is on the other side as well where the Crowley Ford section is. I will show you the very old maps of all the industry what was situated around there. But as we come to the end of this section I must say it's really beautiful. We've got all the modern industry right away to the back. All the way down it's just industry non-stop. But you can imagine back in the old days, it would have been the same once more before all this new modern stuff even moved in. But very muddy over here, down there by that bridge going all the way over, it was literally that thick of mud. I had to try and get across it. And that's the trouble when the weather conditions are like this, you're going to expect very muddy paths for walking. What a view though, it's nice how you can walk the River Stara going all the way down from parts to go all the way to Stamber Mill. 
if you've never done the walk to stand the mill then definitely go ahead and do it it's really beautiful as you get to the live section where it goes through nice wooded areas all the way down but here we are it's joining to the road section now i did see on the old ordnance survey maps just onto the other side over there if i am correct used to be a gas works further to where the crady ford section is used to be a galvanizing works and then you had crady ford just onto the banks of the river stower onto the bottom well here we are well a walk so far but let's go and journey on we've got a little bit more walking to do So right, I have had many people ask me how you get to the other side of the River Stower. So all you've got to do is walk down this road from where we are, for where all this industry is. Cross over where the train station is and go down by Hawk Cycles. The River Stower from there is actually on the left, where it carries on to the Stower Valley Walk. So right, just moving further down the road, I was speaking to a nice bloke about all the industry what was there back in the past. And he just showed me something really cool, just right away in front used to be called Crady Boiler Works. So it was actually called Crady Boiler Company Limited, Boiler Makers and Engineers. It did say it dates to 1800s, but here's a close photo of what the place actually used to look like. You can just see the three bays right away in front, and the three bays are actually still there, which is really cool. So right, here's the three bays that was actually there back in the old days. So I changed all the back of here. There used to be different things. Another backyard right away to the back. But just right away there is the very old brick. You can see where the bay doors are right away there. Used to be big holes at the top up to there. Three holes, one there, one there, one there. And I've covered it up with all this new modern metal that's going to the side up to there as well. But I mean, you wouldn't believe that was actually crazy boiler works just right away there. But it really does date old. You can just see the very old wood just onto the corner. The old metal going all the way across. Wow. And of course, a lot of this old industry is vanishing over time. I've heard it's all going to be demolished on parts of it. This section here is going to be demolished, what's all boarded all the way up. And then just right away in front is actually another very old industry to serve it over. So right, if I carefully zoom in to show you, what they are knocking down is that right away in front. Another very old factory. And the bloke who was talking to, he did say, Back many years ago, parts of this uh, workings here was extended over there. So the Crady Boiler Works behind has changed. It had big massive stacks sticking right away up. It even had two water towers right away to the back, which have actually removed. So that has changed much throughout the years. And just right away in front, you can imagine all this has changed as well. Just down the bottom is the River Stower. But I mean, you can see all derelict land where parts of old industry once stood on top of here. But that one right away in front is really cool. Griffin Woodhouse Limited. It's all a derelict factory, so we are going to demolish all this over time. But I thought I might show you this from the side of it. But that little building there, possibly the old office units, and really dated old. Look at that. So there we go. Just an overview of some of the industry walking all the way down to the other side of the River Stower things that really do date back to the industrial days for the black country and then things what might be lost over time i think there was other chain places around here where they tested chain i think that was possibly somewhere on this corner maybe but i'm not too sure what this place is but check out that really really old and then we've got a crossover by the railway park go all the way across by Hawk Cycles and then back over to the River Stower. Mm -hmm. 
so right here we are we've actually made it closer now to the river stower section by where crowdy forge is so right, all you gotta do is go past this bus stop here and then the stower valley walk it doesn't really go far it only goes into this little section and then loops back round crosses the main road and it carries on to the meets the other section down the back but there we go we've got quarry bonk right away to the top even got Stour Valley Walk, Maypole Fields, just right away here. And this is actually where we're heading to. But i tell you what, what a lovely part of the River Stour this is, just onto this corner. As we head north way through a little bit of a wooded area to make our way back down to the Stour Valley path. But I must say though, it was really cool seeing all the old industry parts down to there. And that bloke showed me a very old photo of the crowded border works just right away there. But I mean, even where we're standing now, just by the side was Crowdy Forge. We even had a galvanising works just onto the corner over here. Once more, you can see tons of industry leading all the way across the River Star itself. And this is why it's called the Industrial Walk, because everywhere you go, if you look back in the past, was industry. But wow, <laughs> look at this, it's absolutely bogging this woody part of the area. I think we are closer to the River Stower, so you're down here on the right, I believe. Right, no, sorry, it's not on the right, it's actually down here. So I think there is some steps. Yeah, I'm correct, but the River Stower is really, really steep down on this section. So from where the station was, right away at the bottom, for what we crossed over, used to be the galvanising works. Something else called the Victoria Works. You can just see the River Stower on the very old Ordnance Survey maps moving all the way across to Ironworks and Crowdy Forge, which is right away in front. But what's cool about Crowdy Forge, if you look very closely, you can see some very small tramway tracks leading all the way off to meet to another railway line. And those tracks are a little bit away from the forge itself. But when you look back on the old Ordnance Survey maps, it really does surprise you what's even there. If we move a little bit more further up, wow, coal mines, you even had Salt Wells Colliery, pit number 30, moving all the way up once more, some more mineral railway tracks, Salt Wells Colliery, and just further over that way, not too far, was the Homer Hill Works, and also the Colliery, right away to the back. So all surrounding with industry going all the way down, coal mines, factories. Over many years, this river star has seen many changes from all the industrial past and the very old brick walls for the old Crowley Falls stretching all the way down. But I mean, you can just really see how old this wall is, possibly dating to the 1800s for when the factory was even there. I mean, look at that. But I mean, what I love about this part of the River Starra is there is evidence of the old industry that was there back from the past. If we view from this corner, we can just see some brick wall stretching from that angle, carefully zoom in. That's actually the first piece of evidence. And if we just roll down this side, and I believe we can see even more, we have got the old brick wall just onto that corner there. And then you can just see the River Stower's got another section flowing all the way into it, and that goes all the way down that way. So if we turn to the right, actually no, I think that's actually a modern part. It's actually a little drain going right away to the bottom. It's actually all this bit here, what's all the very old parts. And if I am very careful, here's the very old evidence of the old Crowley Forge. We've got more brick wall there. Even got more brick wall just right around to that corner. And then if we just move up to here, there is something else here. Now this is really, really dating back a bit to when the factory was even here. Check out that. I just really love seeing things like this from old factories. That is dating back really, really back a bit. And then you can just see even more evidence once more. More brick wall just right away there. And little bits and pieces hiding under the star itself. And then further down the back down that way, more old brick wall just going around to that corner. But these an ordinate survey map showing what this section was like back in the old days. You really wouldn't believe it. Tons and tons of industry around this area here. I mean, Crowley was really popular for all the factories what stretched all the way down, chain making, different kinds of things. You've seen the boiler works that was right away down the back. 
galvanising works, still so much in the area, coal mines. It's just unbelievable. But I mean, not only that, I'm guessing the pub what's there just right away to the back has a lot of history once more, because you can just tell by the architecture zooming all the way in, the old style of the brick, the chimneys, I mean, the windows at the back, it just definitely tells me it's a, not a very, very old black country building. So it's been there for many, many years. I would love to find out what the dates of that pub actually are. But you can just sort of see some bricks sticking out right away to the corner, going round the River Star itself. But those parts there are pretty much the best evidence you can see of the Crady Forge at the moment. That bit of wood sticking out, and from this angle here, you can just see the brick right away there, and also right away there. Another piece there as well, once more. But the photo you can see at the moment was taken in 1903. Just about the best photo I can show you of the River Stour bending all the way around. And that is actually the lower forge for the Crowley Forge section just right away there. So there is a tiny bit of information because someone's put a lot of graffiti onto here. It says the original Crowley Forge, later known as Lower Forge, was situated on the south bank of the River Stour. It was associated with an iron smelting furnace on the north bank whose bellows were driven by water from the new pool. The pool was north of what is now Forge Lane. The furnace went out of use by 1792. You can just really see how far this really does date back. And the new forge, the upper forge, was built on the Mousereet Brook by 1775. And then just viewing all the way down, I think this is actually the Mousereet Brook, what joins up to the River Star itself. Got another photo here saying Mousereet Brook and the River Stour meeting section right away there. So I did cover another video on the Mousereet going all the way to the salt wells because once more that was very industrialised. You had the clay pits right away to the back. You imagine the coal mines next to the canal line itself and many much more. Just a really cool area. There's tons of history around the Crowley area from chains. And when I do get around to it at some point, I'm going to go through where all the old industry used to be, right away to Cradley. But I thought I might have took you on this walk today, because it's very industrialised, looking back at a past for where all the old factories used to be, coal mines, various other different things. And my favourite part of the video was showing you the Corn Greaves Ironworks that was there back from the past. Many people might not realise that that factory was on there. The bloke I was talking to down that road, actually said when he was younger he actually remembers the big massive stack for the Corn Greaves Ironworks actually still standing there until it was actually demolished later on. It's a real shame we're losing quite a lot of black country history over time like you may see here parts of the Crowley Forge gone and there's small evidences and then many more factories with houses being built right away on top of them like you've seen down that road with all the factories that very old factory being there I actually remember it and then throwing all the houses up really fast a real shame but yeah if you've never been on the Stara Valley walk then definitely go and check it out from here now it goes all the way to Lye where you can keep going all the way on to Stamba Mill you come under the viaduct where you can probably carry even further on across another Stara Valley walk because of course the River Stara follows the canal going all the way down to the bottom of Stara Bridge all the way past Dunsley and that carries all the way on to Kidderminster where it meets up to Stourport into the River Severn but what a journey, I've really enjoyed it, hope you have as well. But if you're new, please hit the subscribe button, drop a like to support my content and I will see you on another episode of Exploring the Black Country. See you soon and enjoy the rest of the cinematics.